Diets with Paul Rosen. Our diets, our Western diets in America are just really, you just don't realize how poor they really are. What would you say to others who would like to feel better? Sometimes you need to find the instruction. That's where the testing and everything comes in because without that knowledge, there's no way I could have got to the point where I'm at today. Straight talk about health. And then I start preaching and telling them what I've been doing. (laughs) And this guy named Paul Rosen has changed my life. With your host, Paul Rosen. By the way, the information contained in this program is not approved by the FDA nor intended to treat, diagnose, or claim to cure any medical condition or disease as defined by Western medicine. However, skilled practitioners of many disciplines have found nutrition response testing to be a highly reliable, supportive technology for assessing the health and fitness of the body's functional system. If you were a quarterback in the National Football League, Paul Rosen, and you completed about 50% of your forward passes, you'd be in the average right there. 60 would be better since the NFL went to the short passing game beginning in the 80s. Those higher pass completion rates are more common. However, for our purposes this year, according to the Centers for Disease Control, the flu vaccination is about 48% effective. It's less than the completion rate, completion pass rate of most NFL quarterbacks. So you may go out, get vaccinated, and you get the flu anyway. One of the reasons why that may happen is this. The flu vaccination, according to the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, is ineffective sometimes because the flu itself, the flu virus, mutates every year. So they're involved every year. The manufacturers of flu vaccinations are involved in trying to anticipate how their product can best combat this new form of the flu. And sometimes, Paul, they just get it wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, it's look how good it look how good we are at predicting the weather, let alone predicting, you know, which of the, you know, 200 plus flu viruses might be the predominant strain which which might be in your area uh you know during during the season um it's a it's a crapshoot to say the least and the percentage of um people who actually benefit from uh from the flu, from the flu vaccine is <clears throat> uh at 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 worst zero and there have been several flu seasons now uh, where the effectiveness of the flu vaccine has been uh, horrendous to at most 60 to 70 percent. And the problem is, is you never know what's when, why, where, how. You just never know. Now, before I go on with the flu vaccination issue, I want to say that this is not an anti-flu vaccination segment that's not what i'm trying to promote i'm what i'm trying to uh, um, introduce and promote is the importance of uh, uh, knowing what the risks are versus the benefits in other words become uh, informed and um, the problem with the information on flu vaccines and other vaccines for that matter is that uh, most of the information is tied into the uh, uh you know the the corporate government uh, partnership um and 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 so you know you have to be extremely skeptical with respect to what is the source of the information i think many of us are just under the assumption that once the season rolls around we should get a flu vaccination are there instances in which we're doing ourselves more harm than good or at best providing only a placebo I don't know if I don't know if you'd say placebo, but uh, certainly over the last few years, the the rate of the statistics seem to show that the rate of protection is equal to or below placebo. Placebo being somewhere between you know thirty three and thirty five percent. Is it possible? But that but, we but could... that doesn't mean it's a placebo reaction. It means that I'm talking about the statistic alone. So if you think you're stepping up to the plate to get a vaccination and then as a result of that vaccination you are protected, think again because it's highly likely that, uh, you know, based on prior uh, experience that, um, uh, you know, it, 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 it will not. 
it will not protect you. And in any event, for for the overwhelming majority of of relatively healthy people, the flu virus does not pose the risk of death. It doesn't pose the risk of death. And so the question is, are the are, are there I mean a lot of people don't even know that there are risks. Right? Including death from a, a, a bad reaction to a to a flu vaccination. Now it's totally true that that these are they, they tend to be rarer. Um, you know those kinds of those kinds of um, uh, reactions, but nevertheless they they are there. So what kinds of adverse reactions are we talking about? Death being the most extreme, I suppose. Mm-hmm. But what other kinds of health impacts can we have? Negative impacts from a flu vaccination? Well, anything from you know, just the, uh, uh, the, the, the flu symptoms from a fever to a sore throat to a cough to body aches and pains, uh, you know, diarrhea, uh, you know, those types of things. So these are things that are reactions to the vaccination, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So as I mean, opposed- for me personally, for me personally, um, the last time I got a flu vaccination was back when the, uh, uh, the swine flu was going to kill everybody. This was, uh, I think, back in the 70s, as I recall. And that was the sickest. After that vaccination, After that vaccination, that was the sickest I ever got from the actual flu. For those who don't recall, about 40 years ago, in fact, during the Ford administration, there was this big panic over the swine flu. So the government set up this huge program for us all to get swine flu vaccinations. And it turned out to be the biggest unnecessary scare in history probably one of the biggest unnecessary medical scares in history because we just didn't need that vaccination at all and some people had very negative reactions yeah, to I was one to the vaccination itself mm-hmm. I mean the influenza uh, influenza itself rarely kills healthy people under age 65 and 5 to 20 percent of Americans may experience the type A or type D, uh, type B influenza in an average flu season. These are the the type A, type Bs are the considered the ones that that uh, um, you know may be the 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 most um, uh, likely uh, to be the you know vaccine the the the, the virus that uh, will be present during the flu, the flu season. So that's why the type A and type B. But some researchers estimate that at best vaccines might be effective against only the the uh, influenza type A and type B, which represent only 10 percent of all circulating viruses. We should also note that according to the FDA, the vaccination rate, flu vaccination rate among Americans, is still below 50 percent every year. So that's still a big number. That's a lot of people still out there getting those flu vaccinations. There are multiple manufacturers of vaccinations. And again, they're in this escalating battle every year trying to create vaccinations that will deal with the latest strains of the flu. And most influenza studies are poorly designed and have failed to demonstrate that influenza vaccine is effective or safe. That is to say that the symptoms of the flu, which are generally headache and and runny nose and sore throat and fever and body aches, can be caused by like So many things, you can't count how many things can cause those symptoms. And the only way to determine whether or not you've been exposed to the flu is actually to do some blood work. And, and, and very few people, um, uh, you know, very few instances of, of, uh, recommending blood work when someone's got a cold. Right? You don't go, I mean, you don't go, okay, well, here, let's, let's verify that there's the flu. So the statistics themselves and the studies themselves are very, very questionable right, because of that. Um, and and uh, also the influenza-related deaths usually involve bacterial pneumonia, which is a complication uh, caused by uh, the, the flu in some people, and it rarely occurs in healthy children and adults. Uh, influenza transmission can be prevented or reduced very simply. Wash your hands if you're concerned. If you wash them often, right? Obviously, if you're working with patients uh, who potentially are coming in with the flu, you know uh, it's it's recommended that you utilize a mask 
I don't in my clinic, um, and uh, separate sick people from healthy persons. But, you know, you have to pay the rent. You have to pay your, your mortgage. Um, you know, you gotta, you got to pay for your children's education. So you're not gonna, if you get a cold, generally speaking, people don't stop coming to work. I think there's a huge cultural feeling in the U.S. that we should be getting flu vaccinations. The CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, actually recommends that Americans over six months of age, beginning at that age, that we all get flu vaccinations. That's huge. And as you know, Paul, many employers also offer flu vaccination programs for their employees as well as the families of employees. In, in, in From the standpoint of... The recognition of the science and what's happening. It's just, it's just way too good a business plan, in my view. It's way too good a business plan. It's just like what recently happened when the cardiologist or who's ever responsible for, um, uh, you know, setting the standards for, uh, the, uh, normal blood pressure. Uh, you may have read recently where the, um, you know, so where half the population instantly became sick and required medications because the uh, cardiologists or cardiological related organizations lowered the blood, uh, the normal blood pressure standard from 140 over 90 to 130 over 80. And as a result of that move, 50% of the adult population of the United States, 50% instantaneously required medication. That's a good way to generate business for yourself, isn't it? It is. It is the most amazing business model, uh, uh, probably in the history of the world. As for flu vaccinations, according to CNBC, annually in the U.S., it's a one point six billion dollar industry, billion with a B. And also, the number of Americans expected to receive flu vaccinations this year will be from one hundred seventy one to one hundred seventy nine million. That's a lot of people. Yeah, and um, uh, the 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 mand the mandating you know this is like um, so so much of the the mandated you know medicalization of our our own culture occurs. Uh, you know, some professional organization gets a bee in their bonnet and and they they push and push and push and push, and we end up with uh, fluoride in our water, for example. Um, or we, we end up with, uh, you know, mandating the, the flu vaccine for every man, woman, and child during the flu season every year, right? And people are skeptical and they have right to be skeptical because there are, there are many people, many who have had, uh, uh thousands, by the way, who have had adverse, uh, serious adverse, uh, reactions to, the uh, to the vaccination, and the problem is, is there's no way to determine whether you will be the one that will react poorly until you actually get vaccinated and experience the reaction. And again, with that many people being vaccinated, I think the the chance that some Americans being vaccinated are going to have adverse reactions to the vaccination itself. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, and. Um, you know, part of the, part of the, in, uh, the risks of the vaccine are the ingredients. Um, number one, there is potentially uh, mercury in the form of tamarisol in certain vaccines. So you want to ask that question. Hey, is there any tamarisol or mercury in this vaccine that I'm about to get? Uh, aluminum salts. These are usually, um, inorganic salts not organic salts, which the body tends to be able to deal with better. Um, is there any aluminum in the vaccine I am about to get? Really, aluminum salts mm -hmm. in vaccines? Yeah, so sugar. I could, I, could, I could use my vaccine to panel the side of my house, possibly. Sugar. Is there any added sugar to, I <laughs> believe it or not. I know, he's cracking up. <laughs> so he knows how anti-sugar I am. But uh, sugar or gelatin. These are uh, stabilizers that are used in vaccines. Is there any of that um, before you 
get your vaccination. You know, it sounds very similar, Paul, and I I think this is the point you're leading to, possibly, that these preservatives and other elements in vaccines are like some of the things we see in foods Mm -hmm. that are used to, you know, produce certain effects in the food, you know, to produce consistency that might make that food more appealing. Well, all these things are kind of, kind of like preservatives in the vaccine itself. Some people have adverse reactions to egg protein. Um, There's... Uh, the, some of these vaccines are made from eggs, and, and bits and strands of egg protein can be included in the vaccine that you're about to get. Formaldehyde. I, I, I know something about that, Paul. What these manufacturers produce are called CVVs. That's candidate vaccine viruses. And they put these, they inject these into hen's eggs. Mm-hmm. And they're incubated in the eggs. And, and that's how they determine as well. uh, which viruses well. to use. Yeah. So kind of, uh, Paul, indirectly with this bright yellow shirt I'm wearing to the it's studio this bright. morning. It is yellow, but it ain't that bright. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. it's yeah. yellow. Yeah. I, I kind of felt like indirectly I was, uh, you know, adopting the color of a chicken or an egg and addressing the topic of you know, our you, show this a, morning. With I am my not wardrobe. going there. No, I am not going there. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, thank you for that. Bit. Thank you for that a lot. <laughs> what other things about the vaccines may not be all that healthy for us? Well, the the other thing is formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is used to embalm human bodies uh, as well as other things, um, and that can be included in the vaccine you're about to step up and uh, get injected directly into your, um, uh, you know, bypassing all of your immunoprotective devices and uh, uh, inject it directly into your body, into your blood uh, supply. Um, And then uh, an antibiotic, neomycin, can also be included in some of these, um, uh, you know, vaccine products. So there, there, there are reasons to be concerned, right? The question you have to ask yourself at the end of the day is, do the benefits outweigh the risks? And given the statistics, given the fact that, uh, you know, the, there, there might be, that, that the vaccine itself might be absolutely and totally ineffective for that year. So you could benefit not, that is, get nothing. Meanwhile, you're incurring the risk of an adverse reaction. There are also people so, who have certain kinds of allergies, Paul, that should avoid the flu vaccination entirely. Is that true? Yes, but the thing is, is you won't know until you've actually gotten the vaccination, and then thus it's too late, right? And the same thing is true, uh, you know, with respect to uh, nutritional healing related to vaccines, and that is that uh, each person's an individual and their reaction is going to be individualized. One more note, you can get a free chapter of Paul Rosen's book, The Missing Piece. Just go to his website, acunatural.com, acunatural.com, and fill out the dialogue box that pops up. Rest assured, no information you provide will ever be shared with anyone else. So, what are you waiting for? Get going on your personal road to wellness today.